Welcome to Recalculating Small Business. Like its award-winning book, Recalculating is dedicated to small business in America. Your hosts are Don Mazella and Dan Perkins. Don Mazella is the editor-in-chief of the Small Business Digest. Dan Perkins is a registered investment advisor with 43 years experience in managing money. Dan Perkins here, your co-host along with Don Mazella of Recalculating for Small Business. Our radio program is dedicated to you, helping the small business owners increase their profits. We draw our name from Recalculating, voted the best small business book of 2017 by the Independent Press. In this book, it features ways to grow your small business. Now, here's Don Mazzella. My co-host, Dan Perkins, is on assignment. Beautiful.ai's COO is Lou Giacalone. He's here to talk about how his company solves one of the most vexing problems facing small business, providing a truly great presentation. Lou, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me today. Lou, first, before we do anything else, tell us a little bit about your background, a little bit about your company and your website. Sure, would love to. So, uh, personally, I've been an uh, entrepreneur uh, for my entire career, uh, always been at the intersection of media and technology, having done a lot of stuff with computer graphics in the 80s, video games, and even casino games in the 90s, and then went on to uh, found a company called AdSpace Networks in the late 90s, uh, 2000s, that uh, created digital signage and some of the earlier digital ad media networks, like those seen in shopping malls with the big vertical screens, and uh, now moving on to business communications uh, here in the in the late 2010s. But uh, like I said, always always about media and technology and where those intersect. And uh, Beautiful AI is, uh, you know, absolutely fits that pattern. We are on a mission to effectively democratize design. We see that uh, people are needing to communicate more and more and do that effectively, especially as, you know, the boom of social networks and uh, other mediums have created a great demand for digital content. It's uh, interesting to think of presentations as, as content, but they really are. I mean, it's all about telling a story and uh, do, making a pitch. And the tools to date have put all the onus on the user to create ideas visually that represent their story and then to make them visually attractive, uh, even though they're probably not themselves graphic designers and, and not capable. So. What uh, our founder, Mitch Grasso, set out to do with Beautiful AI is create a system whereby everyday users can create beautiful-looking stuff, hence the name Beautiful AI. Oh, okay. Now, you said that. You set it up. What's your website? It's uh, www.beautiful.ai, so not the traditional .com. The .ai is the extension, represents artificial intelligence, uh, obviously in the news a lot. So we are using AI technology to do the heavy lifting of the layout work and the things that are usually involve a lot of fussing and fidgeting with in programs like PowerPoint or Keynote or Google Slides. Uh, the big difference with us is that the software does it all for you and, and knows the rules of good design so that no matter what you create, it looks great. Okay. So it, uh, is your system something I download to my computer or I operate from your website? How does it work, and what does it do in layman terms for people like myself? <laughs> sure, no problem. Well, I mean, we've all, we've all been exposed to PowerPoint. I mean, it's, it's one of the most ubiquitous uh, tools out there, uh, you know, been around since the 90s and hasn't changed all that much. We're looking to update the experience that people have with uh, presentation software. The program is, it's an online program, so you access it through the website. It runs right in the computer's browser. Uh, right now we're optimized for Google's Chrome browser, but uh, full support is coming down the road. We're really new still. We only launched in uh, February of this year, so what you're seeing is just the beginning of an exciting journey that we're going down. 
by creating stuff in the cloud, similar to the G Suite, uh, it allows you to have access to all your materials from anywhere. Uh, you don't need to download anything. Uh, you can send people links. You don't need to send large files over email and worry about if their email system is going to uh, accept them with the large files. Um, that said, we are working on technologies that will allow you to download the stuff to, with, to your computer uh, and be able to play it back with full fidelity and animation, even in situations where you may not have an internet connection available or you're just concerned about uh, not having any uh, you know, fuss and setup when you go onto a client site for a, for a meeting or a, or a pitch presentation. Uh, you want that confidence of having the stuff locally. So that will be available as well. Okay, I'm, I'm a small a small business, which is our audience. I want to create a, 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 a presentation uh, for a client. What does your tools do that make it, makes it so unique? So, like I was mentioning earlier, all the presentation tools to date make you think about and execute the work that would typically be done by a graphic designer. In big companies, they have dedicated personnel that will work with marketers and salespeople, et cetera, to create their presentations for them because the company wants it to look good, it wants it to be on brand, it wants it to be clear and communicative to the audience and to fulfill the business purpose of the presentation in the first place. In small business, uh, we're forced to do this ourselves, right? We're not, uh, you know, we're not uh, in possession of all these resources, either in-house full-time people or the ability to pay external designers to do our work for us. We have to do it. So the big difference with Beautiful AI is rather than starting from the notion of a blank page where I now have to figure out what I want to put on this page and how to how to make it visually with uh, literal elemental components like lines and circles and text boxes and uh, you know that level of detail with beautiful AI you start with your intention uh, and the intention you communicate through uh, the form of selection of templates that represent individual ideas so let's take the example of something like a, a timeline you wish to express to a, a client how a project might play out and you want to show them a timeline indicating the various steps in the project. So uh, with, with PowerPoint or others, you're going to have to decide how you want to visualize that timeline. And you would be laying out lines and markers where the lines meet and positioning text boxes where you wish the call outs for the text to be. With Beautiful AI, it's an entirely different experience. Uh, knowing that you want to represent a timeline, if you type in the search box once you add a new slide and say timeline, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you a few different options on how to create a timeline. By picking one of them, you immediately start with a timeline, and then you're adding in the individual milestones, which come along with all the graphic treatments that are required to make it look like that. And then all you have to do is enter the content the, the actual milestone uh, information itself, the date, the, the event, and that's it. And if you need to move things around, you just drag them around like objects, uh, not having to worry about did I select every little element and it's like, oh, I selected the lines but the, the dot didn't get selected and now it's left behind and now I've got to undo it and I've got to reselect. I mean, we've all been through that. It's, uh, it's very unpleasant, takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of opportunity for error, and you know I hate to say it, but a lot of opportunity for ugly looking stuff because we're in a rush, we're trying to get the job done, uh, design is not our forte, we're just trying to get things prepared for, you know, again, for our business meeting uh, to, you know, pursue our, our goals, the, the graphic design often takes a back seat and, and often isn't the way we want to represent ourselves. So. This tool is really about giving people the ability to represent, rent them, represent themselves in the best light without having to become an expert in design themselves. We're talking with Lou Jacqueline. He's a COO of Beautiful.ai. But uh, Lou, can I then add uh, a video uh, elements to the presentation? Uh, you can. So currently, uh, 
we offer the ability to grab videos uh, from, from YouTube. Other services will be added later, uh, but absolutely we know that video is a big part of presentations these days, so we let you embed uh, your YouTube video right into the presentation. So when you come up to that slide, it'll play. Uh, in addition, we support other motion like uh, animated GIFs so that if you want to have uh, motion on the slides uh, in, in the content, you can do that. In addition, everything is automatically animated with our tool. We know that animation is a, is a big part of capturing people's attention and focusing their attention so we, we made sure that not only does the system do all the design work for you, but once it's all laid out, it also chooses and it executes appropriate animation when you're playing it back for your audience as well. So that's a really nice uh, feature as well. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. But, uh, but, but I guess my, my question uh, is, um, this sounds like that's something that, that – should have been done a long time ago. Go. Why was it? What? <laughs> why no, wasn't no it? I, I I fooled around with that, and I can tell you how many hours I've put together. I've spent putting together presentations, and it seems to me that um, uh, you you've taken a giant step forward. Uh, and I'm, I'm just surprised some that they haven't done it. Why is that? And what what are the obstacles you've run into and overcome getting to this point? It's uh, it, it it has been a long time coming. We agree. Uh, the the real challenge is that uh, you know most tools again are are really put together for people with expertise. So what it really started as as trying to find a way whereby non-experts could communicate their intent and get something good out. And that was a, a big hurdle for uh, our founder, Mitch Grasso, uh, as he was starting this project uh, to figure out how to encode the rules of design into the, into the computer and have it be able to handle a wide range of, of different uh, ideas and scenarios uh, and, and story elements, you know, we, we all know the ubiquitous bullet points and things we see in slides, but like I mentioned earlier, you know, things like timelines and charts and graphs, these are all other elements that are very much a part of uh, storytelling and, and creating an, uh, a pitch that's going to be effective uh, in terms of swaying your audience to, to do what you, you want them to do, whether it's buy your product or come join you as an employee or motivate your existing employees you know, all the things that you use presentations for. Uh, that was very hard, uh, and, and honestly still is, uh, trying to create something that gives you that automation, yet allows you a lot of flexibility to uh, communicate different things in different ways uh, and, and different amounts. I mean, we know sometimes you have a very simple concept and you're representing it with just a few words, maybe a simple image. Other times it is something detailed and complex like a process diagram. And uh, processes, of course, can have many steps. Uh, so it's got to be flexible and be able to deal with, you know, one, two, three, eight, ten steps and, and all along needs to be able to look good and, and have a consistent design look and feel as well. So the the encoding of these design rules into the technology has really been the hurdle and to create a user interface that gives folks a way to express their intent uh, without uh, being confusing and, and in a way that's intuitive. So uh, it, it's, it should be simple, to, but to make software simple is actually hard. <laughs> uh, that's very true. But, but um, how much does it cost? And, um, I create something. Now, what do I do with it? Can I put it onto, uh, download it and put it onto my com uh, computer, or do I have to uh, br bring my laptop to the place and then link into your, your uh, system? 
Uh, you have lots of options in terms uh, of how you can output it, but let me address your first question first, which was how much does it cost? Well, the great news here is uh, we're, we're early on. We are not currently charging for the product, and we intend to maintain a premium version even when we do start charging, which will probably be sometime either late this year or early next year. Uh, so the good news is it's free. You should absolutely just uh, sign up and try it for yourself uh, if, uh, if this is the first time you're hearing about it. Uh, and everything, and just as a quick aside, everything that you do create while the product is free will remain available to you. We're not at all trying to, uh, you know, trap people or their content. We, we don't believe in that at all. So your, your, your data and your content you create will always be yours. In terms of how you can access that content, there are lots of options. So yes, it's an online tool, so you will always be able to access your content via links. So uh, you can send a customer a link to the presentation. They'll be able to open it up on their computer without sending them anything, uh, you know, any large files at all, and it's guaranteed to look picture perfect. Uh, you can also download the files uh, to uh, PDF so that if you do want to have a file uh, and store it locally for uh, quick access or if somebody um, needs to receive it, again, via email or something, no problem creating a file like a PDF or even an export into PowerPoint. The only thing you're going to lose using those uh, formats is uh, they're not capable of uh, representing the animation that we automatically apply to the product when you're playing it using the online or our download tool. So, uh, of course, we, we encourage people to, to use those methods to get the full benefit of the animation. But, yeah, you're able to, uh, you, know, get, you know, take the content you create and, and apply it as you will. We also give you the option of creating embed links. So, if you've got a website for your business and you want to include uh, like one of those explainer videos or even just uh, some pictures uh, in an automatic rotation uh, to promote stuff or, again, provide little pitches to your audience, you can take any of the presentations and embed them in the website. So it, uh, And they can autoplay just like a video. So uh, even without having any video creation capability, you're able to create animated explainers and pitches that can uh, you know, be embedded on your website or, or other web properties. So this, this, that's a cool feature. Stop right there, Lou. Uh, tell them the website again. Tell our audience the website. It's www.beautiful.ai. And all the stuff, all of the things you just said, uh, emanate by signing up on that website. Correct? Yep. It's a very simple process. Uh, you can even uh, sign in with your Google account with one click. But 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 the point uh, being that all the material you create is confidential and only uh, feelable uh, by you. Am I right? Correct? By the uh, uh, it, creator. Well, uh, by your choice, absolutely. So everything you create is in your account. You can choose on a presentation by presentation basis if you want to share it with other people. Uh, you can invite others to collaborate with you and uh, uh, co-edit. So uh, if you've got multiple folks on your team and you all want to work on the same presentation, you're able to uh, send a collaboration invite, and then they'll get access to that presentation as well, and you can work on it. When you're sending links to clients, uh, you, you can feel confident that uh, it, they're, they're the ones being received because we can, when you um, have a private presentation that you share with an external audience, we make sure that we verify that their email address is, is who they are and that you know that the recipient is the person you intend because obviously lots of times you got sensitive business information that you're transmitting with these presentations and you don't want them to get out. So we know this and security is a, is a, big, uh, a big thing that we make sure that you have full control over. Uh, we're, sp we're talking with Lou ja uh, Jacqueline. He, uh, he's with beautiful.ai. Uh, but I, I'm, I guess I'm sitting here, and, you know, I've used the tools to create the slides, et cetera. Um, can, can I integrate your system into my, own, my slide presentation, or do they have to stand alone? Well, uh, so I'll, there's, I guess there's a couple ways to think about that. I mean, we do know that, you know, we're brand new in PowerPoint's 
been around for 30 years, so there's lots of folks with lots of PowerPoint presentations that already exist. Unfortunately, because of the, the way the system works, and what I mean by that is it, is it doesn't think of things in terms of lines and boxes and, and text and stuff like that. It thinks of them as, as objects and concepts. Uh, with, with semantic meaning, uh, we're not able to just take your existing PowerPoints and import them. The, the good news, though, is it is really easy to recreate stuff. If you know what it is that you're trying to uh, create, building stuff with beautiful AI can be done in minutes, uh, not hours. Uh, so we see a lot of people taking uh, decks that they've built in the past and, and bringing them in and, and sort of freshening them up and getting the benefit of the automated design as they're uh, translating it, if you will, from the, from the PowerPoint into Beautiful AI. Uh, as I mentioned, you're able to export the stuff from Beautiful AI to PowerPoint. So if you just want to uh, take advantage of the tool's easy ability to do data visualizations like the charts or the graphs or you know, uh, you know, uh, one of those nice little infographic elements where you got a percentage and showing how many uh, people, as with you know, little people icons uh, grayed out of a certain percentage. All of those things are like really easy to do if you just want to jump into the tool, create something like that, and then spit it out and use it in your existing PowerPoints. We have a lot of customers who are doing that too. The great thing is, you know, you, it's like a lot of tools. We we try and make it flexible so that you can do the workflow that you want to do, and, and this is something that we're always going to be improving. Well, uh, Lou, my question, I have a chart that shows uh, growth over uh, seven years. Uh, yeah. What, uh, okay. Do, do I, uh, is there a way to just enter that data? Well, right now, if I go to, uh, to a PowerPoint, I put the data there, and it, uh, it, it'll somehow create a... Uh, um, a, a, a chart out of it that looks fairly well, uh, showing an upward trend. The, is the same thing apply in your in your in your product? Definitely, uh, we we try and make it really easy. So uh, if you if you don't have the data in a structured form already, like a like a an Excel sheet or a Google spreadsheet, uh, you can type it right in to Beautiful AI uh, in the chart maker, and it will go ahead and uh, create a beautiful chart for you just from the data you type in. Even easier though is if you do have your sales numbers like you're talking about or any other data set and it's already in Excel or Google Sheets, you can literally just uh, highlight the range you're interested, copy the data, you come into Beautiful AI, you create your new chart, you say import the data, you paste the data in and it's done. It'll represent your data in a beautiful chart. It'll also give you options on different chart types. You might want to see how, how the differences look. You can just easily click between them and, and see the different representations. We then offer you lots of great options on how to uh, highlight things and call them out. One of the biggest things that you know we spent time thinking about when looking at charts is that most of the time, uh, one of the biggest mistakes people make with charts is just putting the chart there and asking the viewer to interpret what this chart means. It's really up to you as the person making the chart to tell your story in a, in a, in a very clear way. What is it about this chart that I'm supposed to look at as the viewer? Well, we provide tools like uh, highlighting specific data points or uh, adding a text call out to a number so that you're able to explain why that's important. We also give you a, a two-click mechanism to show the relationship between two points. So if you want to show the growth from Q1 to Q3, you can highlight those two values and say, uh, you know, uh, to show the growth, uh, to show the difference between those two, and it'll show you, for instance, that you're up 86% between the one to the other, and you don't have to calculate that. It knows that that's what you're trying to do. So we try and provide these abilities that are not focused on, again, uh, low-level stuff about you know lines and boxes and, and text, but it's it's about giving you you know very clear ways to represent and then uh, do the, uh, the, the rest of the storytelling on top of that data so that people know what it is that you're trying to draw them to conclude from that chart that you just made. Oh, one last question. 
How did you come up with the name Beautiful Dot um, AI? <laughs> it was uh, well. It's a tough one. I mean, company naming is getting harder and harder all these days. Uh, uh, just you know, so, uh, this is why we see so many weird names out there. Uh, we wanted to. We really wanted something that captured uh, both the simplicity of what we're trying to do and the fact that, really, at its core, the the when when Mitch started this company, uh, his his goal was to create something that would allow users to effortlessly create beautiful work documents. And uh, at first we were really afraid of the word beautiful because we were worried, well, is everybody going to just think we're a cosmetics company or, you know, something else in, you know, the, uh, you know, beauty or, or fashion world. Uh, but we realized that we actually liked the sort of the contradiction of the word beautiful, which again, is tends to not have tech connotations with the notion of AI, which is obviously very techy, very cutting edge, uh, with the you know all the excitement around artificial intelligence. So we decided to go, you know, we decided to go with it, and uh, it's been well received so far. It has very clever. But on that mark, uh, on that uh, note, we have to uh, bid goodbye to Lou. Jack alone. He's the COO of Beautiful Data AI. A link to his website will be on recalculating.biz tonight, where you can hear this and every other recalculating program. And also tell us the guests you might like to have on the show by uh, uh, t taking a short survey. Thank you, Lou, so much for being with us. It's been very illuminating. My pleasure, Don. Thanks so much for having me on today, and uh, appreciate uh, the attention of your audience. I'm going to go out there and try your system sometime this week. Excellent. Please do, and just let me know what you think. We're, we're Like I said, we're early days and very eager to hear what people think and what ideas they have for ways we can improve. You got it. Thank you again, Lou, for being with us. Great. Thank you, Don. Dan, we need to stop a moment to hear from one of our sponsors. Want to know more about health savings accounts for your company or yourself? Go to 2hsa.com and get a free employer's primer. Health savings accounts are a cost-effective way of offering health care benefits to your employees and yourself. HSAs build retirement funds for your employees, improve morale, and reduce your health care benefit cost. For a free employer guide to HSAs, go to 2hsa.com. That's 2HSA.com. Marcus Limonis, J.D. Powers, and John Scully, and a hundred other presidents and experts contributed to recalculating the book. Why did all these people agree to contribute to the book? I'm Don Mazzella, and I'm the editorial director of Small Business Digest. And for 20 years, we have been offering small business leaders information and data to increase profits. Recalculating the book was named the best small business book by the Independent Press Association. Whether you need help with marketing, staffing, finance, operations, technology, or many other subjects, they're all here in Recalculating the Book. They're now available at Amazon at a reduced cost. We've also created the radio program Recalculating on Recalculating.biz. You know, Dan, before we go any further, I, I want our audience to know about your new runaway hit book on uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease and how it affects teenagers. Please tell us about it. Yeah, Don, thank you. The book is called Why Can't Grammy Remember Me? Uh, it's a book written primarily for for children ages 9 to 12, but really needs to be read by the entire family. Uh, and what I try to do is I try to take the, the subject matter of dementia and the challenges uh, to a, a different level in the form of a mystery story with my two little detectives, two little girls, Hudson and Charlotte. And uh, it, it really creates a, a breakthrough opportunity for individuals small children and parents and families to begin to understand the problem with dementia. See, Don, the, the real challenge is that the children are the forgotten people. 
mom and dad spend so much time working to try and take care of mom and dad, they don't take the time to explain to the children what's going on in grandma or grandpa's brain. So you can buy it at Amazon.com, and or you can order it through your local bookstore or any online bookstore besides Amazon has it available. Why can't Grammy remember me? Illustrations are spectacular. A story by Dan Perkins. Your runaway bestseller, new book. Why can't Grammy remember me by Dan Perkins? Dan Perkins here from Recalculating.biz. I want to tell you about Bob Bethel. Bob's new book is Strengthen Your Business, Fail-Proof Strategies for Small Business. His suggestions are easy to understand and very helpful. Bob Bethel's book, Strengthen Your Business, can be found at Amazon.com or can be ordered at your local bookstore. Dan Perkins with your featured book. My co-host, Dan Perkins, is on assignment today, but we have with us Francis Dinha. He is founder and president of Open VPN is a company uh, I find extremely fascinating. Well, Francis, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for the invitation. Well, Francis, we start always by asking uh, our uh, guests, tell us a little bit about yourself personally before we talk about anything else. Okay, so my name is Francis Dena. I was actually born in Iraq, uh, a Syrian Christian in Iraq, in northern Iraq a place called Ahmadiyya, and uh, from Iraq there, uh, Ahmadiyya, we had to basically uh, move to Baghdad because of the war And uh, when I was only six years old, and then uh, I actually immigrated to Sweden when I was 20 years old, um, I left Iraq for uh, political and, uh, I guess, other reasons that uh, the situation in Iraq was not very good both politically and um, economically and uh, socially. So moved to Sweden, and my whole family moved to Sweden, graduated in Sweden, got uh, my master in uh, computer engineering, and also doing my PhD in, uh, in computer engineering as well there in Sweden. And uh, then uh, I lived in Sweden for about 10 years and uh, worked for Ericsson for a few years, uh, between, I would say, uh, Sweden and, uh, and U.S. I came to U.S. in uh, 1986, and uh, I've been in the U.S. about uh, almost over 30 years and uh, pursued the opportunity and, you know, the land of opportunity and moved to the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, and started uh, my ventures here and uh, working on OpenVPN right now. So just uh, to give you a little bit summary of my background, uh, pretty much I'm um, from the Middle East and lived in Middle East mm. almost uh, 20 years and about 10 years in Sweden and 30 years in the U.S. <laughs> well, uh, we're always glad when people come to this country, come into it and, be, and become successful. Now, Francis, tell us about your company, Open. VPN. Okay, so my, the company OpenVPN Open Spas, VPN uh, stands for Virtual Private Network. It's really a security software company. Uh, we started this company uh, in 2005. We've been in business about 13 years. Uh, this is an open source, an open source uh, VPN software. It means uh, it's under a gem, uh, basically uh, a GPL license, which stands for generic public license, and that means we open our code to the public and to the review of the researcher. So it's a different business model. Uh, we basically, um, you know, allow companies to take our software and deploy it for free. And, um, and with that, basically, we've been able to establish a pretty good name in the marketplace. And with the open source platform, we've been able to build our enterprise edition of our software, which we license to mostly businesses, and now we have our OpenVPN. I've been downloaded more than uh, 50 million downloads, and we have uh, more than, uh, I would say, uh, uh, 30, 35 business customers uh, across the globe uh, using our software and deploying oh, it for Francis, their security. Francis, I'm going to interrupt you because I know sure. enough IT to be dangerous. But um, <laughs> you said... You, you say uh, two words. You say um, a virtual, open source virtual. 
But, but let, let's go down to a basic. What does your software do for a small co- for any c- enterprise? Okay, so so VPN is a virtual private network, meaning it's mostly for if you were to place all your information and database and resources, say, in one place in your data center or in a particular premise, and you have uh, remote workers, remote employees working either from remote offices, from home. So this is will allow you to tunnel all your information from whether you have a mobile device, whether you have your laptop, to access this private information and data that's deployed on your private cloud, on your, your data, private data center, or in your private network. So pretty much it's building a virtual network across the Internet, but give you the same level of security as though you would have the network on your office. So the idea is to virtualize your private network across the Internet and provide you with the same level of security. Okay, so, so let me, for our, our audience, um, I'm sure there's a lot of technical knowledgeable guys but, uh, and women, but there's also um, uh, people like myself that, that, that hear these words that, uh, tossed around, and uh, I know you know it, but I, uh, we, we'd like to know it. So in, in, in essence, I, I'm getting a lot of proprietary information, and I want to ensure that only my, myself and my authorized people can, can uh, see it and use it. And, and you, your system allows us, uh, these, uh, us and uh, the people in my company, to put, in, install and, and uh, uh, enter and download this data but no one else. Would that be a, a, a good, an explanation of That's it? That's correct. That's correct. So you have, say, let's take as an example, if you have an email, and that email is sitting on, an, on your server or, or some information, basically, that you're trying a document on your uh, server, on your private network, and you want to download that, that private document, okay? You just don't want to download it on an open Internet because anybody can see it. If somebody taps into the Internet or if you are in a, in a basically public uh, Wi-Fi or something like that, anybody can intercept that information. So what we do is we create a tunnel between your device, wherever you are, and that tunnel, everything is encrypted. Okay. And that information exchange between your server, where the data is, to retrieve that information, and in your laptop or in your mobile device, everything is encrypted. So only you will see that information, but nobody else can tap into that information. Well, in this world of uh, every uh, of, uh, bandits trying to get this data, uh, you're certainly a, um, something that small business people sh- should be looking at. But um, now, is is your uh, uh, service designed for large corporations, medium, or uh, smaller co- enterprises as well? Well, actually, we have small businesses and even large corporations. So we have companies like Google have deployed OpenVPN for their, uh, all their IT infrastructure for, for the employee across the world. Uh, we've got smaller company of 10 employees implementing this because they have some sensitive data information, some documents, or uh, we have law firms that are implementing this because they don't want to put data in the public uh, uh, Internet. They want to have it on their private server, and they want to make sure that everything is encrypted and they have the proper security mechanism there in order to provide a better security for their employees and for the information. So, so it is really across uh, the board. I mean, sometimes even we have some of the, I call them prosumers, even consumers, small, small user, even at home, like they want to keep their information private and, and have access to this information more privately and, and, and making sure everything is secure, you know, so it is. Yeah. It is from small to large size businesses. Well, I'm going to sort of, uh, go way far afield. How did you get into it, uh, this, and how did you come up with the idea of creating such a company? Well, idea. You always have uh, tons of ideas. Actually, this was in, in 2005 when I uh, actually uh, started the company. I, I started thinking about a lot of things. What's going on in the internet? Uh, everything was so insecure and Obviously, there were some VPN implementation, but the implementation of VPN was very kind of basic. And then, uh, then I met James, who was the co-founder of, of OpenVPN as well. 
and he had this open source and he was an open source person and and we we got together and uh, he actually did some work for me when I started the company and we decided to to team up together and to build uh, the next generation of VPN and 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 go with the open source model and uh, at that time um, maybe a lot of companies didn't believe that the open source is the right direction so uh, most of the company were based were building more hardware based like boxes solution and uh, I had the vision this is not going to be a box solution because Everything has to be distributed over Internet. You have to have a more of a scalable solution. So it's sometimes you see things like, you know, you see the Internet is not secured and you believe we have, I believe that we have to build another layer of security on top of the current Internet. And uh, that's what we're doing, actually. Uh, we're still uh, building this. We're still uh, building one piece at a time. And uh, this might take some time to, to have a, a much bigger adoption in the marketplace, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, the uh, uh, reason you're on this program, our audience is made up of uh, uh, small business listeners, uh, 59% of whom, according to our surveys, are either presidents and or uh, owners. But now, uh, I, I'm an owner of a company, and uh, everybody right now is concerned about security, to a greater mm-hmm. or lesser a- area. But they're seeing all of these uh, uh Downloads, illegal downloads, etc. Now they, uh, I come to you and I say, I'm Francis. I'm interested in uh, having a, a virtual private network. Well, how do you start? What are the questions you ask the this new potential client uh, to start? Well, with? typically, uh, well, typically our clients mostly are IT people, so they already actually uh, understand the need for VPN and. Typically, we have a business model where we the, the leads are generated online on our website. So typically, they download our software, they try it, they go to our support. We have a, they open a ticket. We have online support, and they ask questions and they tell us exactly what their use case is, what is exactly that they're trying to use OpenVPN, and they can download the software for free. We can give them we give them some limited kind of capacity they can connect to users to the server and they can deploy it on any kind of environment whether they can deploy it on their premise they can deploy it on the cloud wherever they want to do and test it and uh, that comes with two licenses with two devices for free and then uh, after that if they like all the features all the capabilities then uh, they purchase licenses say if it's a company with 10 employees they purchase for 10 a hundred they purchase is for hundred and thousand for thousand. So we've got companies who've got thousands of of licenses, and we've got companies who've got only ten licenses. So basically, the model we you can imagine we do get about more than uh, uh, five hundred, six hundred new business customers every month. So uh, we don't have kind of the sales ta- staff to go and explain to everybody, but we have a lot of information on our website. We do have a lot of guidelines about different use cases. We make it as simple as possible for businesses to download and deploy, and, and we have the support staff to, to help them with that as well. Well, uh, let me take it a, t- a step further. Um, I'm out in the field, and I'm using um, a, 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 an iPad or something, and I want to transmit the data from, uh, from my a- iPad to the VTM, uh, v, a VPN. Um, uh, is it encrypted from the time it leaves the uh, iPad device to it reaches it, or uh, the, does it encrypt afterwards? No, no, it's encrypted from the time it leaves the, the, the basically before it leaves the device. <laughs> so basically, the information that's coming through the stack on your network stack on the machine, you know. It once it leaves, it's all encrypted. Okay, so through the network on the Wi-Fi, it's all encrypted, and it goes all the way encrypted when it hits your server, whatever your server is, whatever your data, it's encrypted all the way there. So if your server, you've deployed our server in your private network or your private cloud, it's everything is encrypted all the way to that server there, so nobody can see it. But you, 
and of course the administrator who has who has basically deployed the server on the private network on or the private cloud. Hmm. So it's well, end-to-end uh, encryption. Uh, again, I'm, probably these questions are uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, simple for you, but uh, I, I know these are the kind of questions that, that I would ask. But uh, am I? I'm out of the field. I'm using my iPad or my uh, Google or whatever. But uh, as a licensee, am I, am I giving something inside my computer which um, uh, enables uh, enables me to uh, encrypt the message before it leaves the uh, the iPad and travels over a uh, network, or do I? Uh, well, I mean, it, it depends. Okay, so so there are two different use use cases. You're talking about the consumer, or you're talking about the business users. So there's two business. different things, I, right? I, I'm a uh, I'm a geologist. You're an employee. Uh, you're an employee. Right. So you're an employee of a company, and you're trying to access some private information on right. a private network of that company. Then, what basically before it leaves your computer, we have a client that you actually download and install on your machine. It's an open VPN app. That app, when it's installed, and when you connect, any information that leaves your computer, it's all encrypted all the way to the server that is deployed on your private network or private cloud in order to access that information, that, that private information we're talking. We're not talking about going and accessing your basically Facebook or you're accessing your uh, Twitter account. That's not secured. Okay, because the public can see it. That's on the public. We're not talking about public cloud. We're talking about private. So, mm-hmm. so, so think of it. Think of it this way. Think of it like we're creating a secure tunnel, a private tunnel. All the way that tunnel, all your information are going through that tunnel, and nobody can see it between your computer, that information, and all the way to where your server is sitting. So that's on your private network. The reason I asked the question, Francis, and, and you've answered it beautifully, is that I, I heard of an instance where a guy uh, worked for a company, and uh, uh, it turned out that, yes, they encrypted everything, but uh, for the people in the field, uh, bet- between going from the field to the uh, uh, in-house computers, they were using uh, – standard networks and in fact their data was being stolen in that point that's why i asked the question uh i, okay, I heard so that's of that. a different that's a that's a different question that's a question of authentication so this is part of the encryption so the question is is can if somebody steal, steals your credential and log in and i'm trying to pretend as you to access the information obviously it's a problem right so there is Correct. a different level of there is different level of security level you can implement to avoid that as well. So there is something called second factor authentication, meaning don't just trust the first factor. Don't just trust somebody using their user ID and password. You have to let them into the network. So when you have that app, private tunnel, the, the open VPN app that's installed on your machine or your, on your mobile devices, it asks you for the user ID and password. It has to verify that. But then what it does also, there is a second factor authentication, meaning it's going to send a text and say, or it's, it's going to send a code and say, can you, did you receive this code in another device? Okay, it's called second factor to make sure it's not somebody that stole your password because there's a lot of phishing expedition out there that they send you this email. They, they pretend that, you know, maybe you're administrator, maybe they pretend something, and then you accidentally type the user ID and password, and now they steal that, your information, right? So in order to prevent that, there is something called second factor. So what second factor is, basically, we know you have another device in your possession, like you receive the text messages. And then when you receive that code, you enter that code as a second factor to make sure you are the person you, you're saying who you are, and then to let you into the network. Now, there are more even security that people will implement. What we have something, it's called certificate. Okay. So certificate, what it is, is, is with the OpenVPN, we have a certificate that your administrator, 
can install those certificates on your devices. So say you have a device, right? And they know this is your device. They're going to install that certificate on your device. The minute you open your app, if that certificate is not there and it does not match the server, the server will know, oh, okay, this certificate doesn't belong. This person doesn't even, is not even allowed. It doesn't matter even if you have the right password, whatever. It doesn't matter. This device is not certified to even connect, even to get to the network. You will not be able even to get through. It doesn't matter even if you have the right password. And this is what yes. people love about OpenVPN because of that certificate that these small businesses can say, if I have 10 machines, I'm going to go and install these certificates in 10 machines. Only those 10 machines are going to be allowed into my network. Guess what? The hacker is not enough to steal just your password and credential. Now they have to steal your devices, well, which makes it impossible, right? So, yeah. so that is another uh-uh. thing that, that, that people are – a lot of businesses are not very careful because they go to a web browser and they just open the browser and then they trust whatever provider. They say, oh, we're providing all the security and all that. You go through the web browser, but, but there is no, no certificate, okay, uh, that, that will make sure that you get the certificate to get to the server. So the server, the network will check that certificate. I want to make sure this is the right device that's connecting to me before even I check the credential, your credential. And then on top of the credential, even if you have the right certificate, you have the right credential, I'm going to check you as a second factor as well. I'm going to send you another tech, um, a code and say, type this code. So I want to make sure this is you. Hmm. We're talking with Francis Dinha. He's the founder and uh, co-president of Open VPN. That's Open VP Victor P- P- Patrick N- Nelly. Uh, your website, Francis. Before we go any further, it's OpenVPN.net. Let's spell it out for our listening audience. Okay, OpenVPN. Open is open. VPN is V as a Victor, P as Peter, and Nancy dot net. N E T. But if you Google well, Open VPN, if you Google Open VPN, you'll find us. It's just number one there on the Google search. Well, we're, we're glad, we have you here to talk about cybersecurity and small business. You're doing a heck of a job for us, Francis, and thank you. Let me go on to um, a, a little bit more about. You know, you've been in business now uh, about 15 years, 13, 14 years. Um, what have what are the two or three things you t- uh, tell someone starting out in a small business today that you've learned over those years? Two or three things that you think are important to keep in mind. Well, I mean, two or three things to keep in mind. Uh, well, make sure make sure you have enough cash and you have enough money to really start a business, uh, both personally and also for your business, because uh, your cash, the cash flow is really, it's like the your blood and uh, for your business. So you need to make sure that you have enough cash that's flowing through, no matter what idea you have. And sometimes there are a lot of surprises in your business and these surprises might set you back. And if you don't have that kind of extra cash and you don't have that flow, then your business is going to go down. That's the first thing. I mean, the, the, the second thing I would say is, is basically validate and validate and validate your business model and your product idea. Don't be afraid of sharing your idea because if you thought of an idea and you think, well, there are no other people have thought about it, um, you're wrong about it. There are a lot of people who have thought about the same idea. So when you share that idea, when you discuss it with people, getting advice, you get more validation in the marketplace, making sure you have the right business model in mind, have a good plan. So that's the second thing I would say is validate and validate your business model and your idea. And the third thing is perseverance. I mean, you have to really have a lot of perseverance and, and, and stay on top of things and execute. I mean, it's all about execution. So, so I think I would say the three things I would say is cash flow is, is validation of your business model and perseverance. Hmm. We're, we're talking with Francis Dinha 
uh, we're almost at the end. Uh, he's a f- co-founder of Open uh, uh, VPN. VPN. I, those those uh, letters get me mixed up all the time. But um, uh, Francis, if people want to get uh, to talk to you more, because I know I could talk for another half hour, but unfortunately, the time is up. How can people reach you? Okay, just send me an email, francis at openvpn.net. And spell out Francis, believe it or not. Francis is F-R-A-N-C-I-S. It's the Pope's name. Uh, I'm not Pope, Mm. but Francis. (laughs) At (laughs) openvpn, V-P-N.net. Thank you so much for being with us, Francis. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Have a great day. You've really shown us an awful lot today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, Will you spell out uh, your name? My email is D as in dog, A as in apple, R as in rose, M as in Mary, A as in apple, N as in Nancy, I as in igloo, O as in orange, S as in Stan, at cmu dot edu. Thank you so much, Dan. It has been a, a pleasure. A link to your website will be on recalculating.biz tonight, where you can hear this and every other recalculating program, and you can tell us guests you might like to hear. Dan Armanios, thank you so much for being with us and, and for bringing a, a lot, like I have to say, outstanding information. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure, Don. Thanks for having me. Dan Perkins here for Songs and Stories for Soldiers with your veterans tip of the day. Did you know that the suicide rate for women vets is 12 times that of their sisters in civilian life? Did you know that one in four women vets feel uncomfortable about talking to people about their mental health issues? Did you know almost 600,000 women vets in America are suffering from PTSD? It's time to help. It's time for all of us to encourage our sisters, mothers, and wives to get help by contacting their local VA hospital clinic or community-based health care center. So if you know a woman vet that is suffering, go to va.gov and find their nearest VA facility. This has been Dan Perkins of Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us with your veterans tip of the day. Marcus Limonis, J.D. Powers, and John Scully, and a hundred other presidents and experts contributed to recalculating the book. Why did all these people agree to contribute to the book? I'm Don Mazzella, and I'm the editorial director of Small Business Digest. And for 20 years, we have been offering small business leaders information and data to increase profits. Recalculating the book was named the best small business book by the Independent Press Association. Whether you need help with marketing, staffing, finance, operations, technology, or many other subjects, they're all here in recalculating the book. They're now available at Amazon at a reduced cost. We've also created the radio program on recalculating.biz. In New York this week, 500 managers and bankers from across the fintech world met to discuss the rising use of online financial resource companies. It was the latest of a number of such concaves across the country. What does it mean for small business leaders? Speaker after speaker droned on about the funds available to grow their small businesses. Other panels talked about the ease such companies are making the loan process. Finding the money to grow can be as short as an hour. Some speakers said the average was three days versus going to a more traditional banking resource, which could take up to three months. But as one speaker pointed out, small businesses can suffer in one way from the fintech revolution. The personal banking touch that puts the small business leader in physical proximity to the banker That personal touch that can come in handy should growth plans not work out exactly uh, as expected is not there. There is an old saying, when you owe enough to the bank, you own the bank. Most banks won't let that happen, but having a personal relationship 
can ease some issues. Fintech bankers are about doing everything over the internet. For those times when the small business succeeds, this works great. But what happens if they don't? It's harder without that personal touch. Thank you for joining us on Recalculating. We hope the information you received on today's episode was helpful to you in starting and growing your business. Please go to our website, recalculating.biz, to contact us, to listen to past shows, and see special offers. Until next time, remember, if you grow, we grow. Join us next week for more helpful ideas to make your business a great success. Recalculating, a program designed to help you be successful.